seen as a, a producer of absolutely sublime, enduring and alluring paintings. Other artists made careers out of just one of Picabia's ideas, but he had a new one every day. The great thing about uh, Francis Picabia was a little bit like Picasso. He was really a sort of artistic alchemist. He's a rebel, he's an iconoclast, he's a thinker, he's a visionary. He's really many different artists in one. From the early works which are impressionistic, he goes through divisionism and then he discovers Fauvism and Cubism and Dada and through to the pop and abstraction of his later years. I think with time, one only has to think about contemporary artists like Jeff Koons, for example, or even John Curran, to see the weight that Picabi has had, the influence that he's had on younger generations of artists. What is truly exceptional about these two pictures is that of the different Picabias they represent, each one shows the artist with his A game. One work from the late 20s and one work from the early 40s, bringing these two into conversation shows just what a rich and meaningful artist Picabia really was. Picabia's Transparence a series, which come from the mid-twenties onwards, are amongst his most desirable works uh, ever executed. They come from the period uh, of the 1920s where he's exploring uh, the kind of cinematographic techniques in a way, and in painting he uses that to create this kind of cross-fade where overlapping imagery is brought together in this wonderful, beautiful, uh, light, spontaneous technique. You know, if you think of the 20s in Paris, it's in a moment of joy and life and an explosion of energy and innovation. That kind of joie de vivre comes through in this painting. Picabia painted uh, on commission for Léon Rosenberg, a very eminent dealer in Paris in the 20s. Picabia did a number of these transparences for the apartment, of which this is definitely the central motif, the most magnificent of them all. You can see the figure of Pan with his pipes. You can see the, the centaur, the half man, half beast, a um, very classical image. You can see the female nude. The imagery comes to the fore and recedes in this sort of wonderful sense of movement, almost like a sort of musical or a dance or something across the canvas. I would define the masterpiece quality of the nude by the enduring power of its image. This nude was painted by Picabia during the war in the south of France in a very dramatic context. The availability of live models and other kind of, you know, artistic subject matter was incredibly difficult. Things like magazine photographs, and in this case, erotic imagery from erotic magazines, of course, become the subject matter. So this dark background where the back is in-painted with an almost tar-like blackness, but then the body is sort of haloed uh, in calm lighting as well. And, you know, the way that the painting has small little accents of color, like the mouth, for example, which is that tiny application of red paint, but which is the only red in the whole picture. And when you stand back from of course, it really grounds uh, the facial features. Female nudes have been in art history for millennia, ultimately, but the treatment is so radically new. To see it with these kind of, you know, incredible colors and simplicity is pure Picabia. You know, this is him at his absolute best. The fact that you can see a complete sketch on the verso of this one just shows the importance that Picabia has given to this precise painting. Such a transparency has not appeared on the market since at least 20, 30 years. And this nude, there have never been such a great nude, ever, at auction by Picabia. So it represents a wonderful opportunity for the surrealist collectors, for modern art collectors, for contemporary art collectors. Even one masterpiece leading the surrealism and its legacy cell is a dream, but having two is something I could never have dreamed about. This is such a great moment. It's one that can't be ignored.